What's going on guys, we're back again with a crazy video. So today we got Saudi Arabia the line. So this is a video and it's called linear cities don't work Saudi Arabia, here's why. So someone is gonna be debunking the linear city that I already debunked like three or four times. I did like three or four reactions to it. This one should be hilarious guys. They're, they're creating a city and a cube type structure and also you know a few kilometers wide uh, line that Saudi Arabia will be implementing. And this one should be absolutely crazy. So make sure to leave me a subscribe. Also comment down below. Tell me what you guys want to see in the next video. And yeah, the comments help the algorithm guys. So let's get it. Look at these satellite images of a very specific place in the Saudi Arabian desert. As you can see, it's a full blown construction zone and they are building possibly one of the dumbest things I can think of, <laughs> a linear city. Okay, so it's not one kilometer, it's 170 kilometers. In the desert. Now, you might assume the stupidity lies in the shape of the city alone. Right. And while the shape is dumb, you'll soon see that it's hardly the worst part about this project. So, this project, called Neum, is a mega project Saudi Arabia is ready to spend half a trillion dollars on. The only problem is, it won't work. At least, not as they intended to. See, the city's insane design relies on cutting-edge technology that no one has ever used or even seen before. Whoa. Apparently, this completely new city will feature things like nature reserves and a super fast and efficient transportation system, what? all within nature reserve. a straight, mirrored glass line spanning 170 kilometers of desert. What's crazy is that Neom is just one of the nine megacity projects planned near the western coast of the country Jesus. now artificial so it's not only the <laughs> neom isn't just the one mega city they have nine others these massive projects aim to radically transform the country and embark the kingdom on a new era of modernization because they want it to be the same as abu dhabi and the united arab emirates the country that i was born in so i was like six years old but they want saudi arabia to be like dubai a modern country that has lots of people coming into the country. Okay, they want it to be modern. Business and development. According to conservative estimates, Neom on its own will cost the Saudi government nearly half of the total $1 trillion infrastructure Jesus. project. So why spend so much money to build a mega city in the desert? Well, you see, the goal of the Saudi 2030 project is to attract investment and tourists from abroad. Yep. And you'll soon see why this is much harder than they expect it to be. But I'll reveal one of them now. As Saudi Arabia has a very low English proficiency, one of the lowest in the world in fact. So either the Saudis will have to learn English or the tourists will need to learn a bit of Arabic, which is problematic unless they of course use Speakly. I know, okay, this, this is a sponsor. I know a little bit of Arabic, just by the way. I learned Arabic for about six years of my life, a good few years of my life. So it's a good, nice language. I do like Arabic quite a bit. But what I was gonna say is guys, the line in America, I went to America and Canada and they called like a line of shopping centers, they called it strip mall. That's what it's called where there's like a line and you drive up and down it and there's like loads of shopping centers on either side. So this is basically just like a mega, 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 mega strip mall. Right? The reason Saudi Arabia is so desperate for foreign investment is pretty simple. The country will go bankrupt if they fail to change. See, right now, oil is the primary source of revenue driving their economy, yep. and it's the reason they became so rich in the first place. Yeah. But with major economies like China, Europe, and the US pushing for electric cars, Saudi Arabia needs to find a new source of revenue before the world stops buying petrol. On top of this, we are currently developing biodegradable plastics with the potential to replace oil-based plastics altogether in the near future. So they've come up with the brilliant solution of spending a ridiculous amount of this black gold on flashy mega projects to attract foreign investment, yep. talent and tourists to the country. Uh -huh. But while flashy infrastructure projects may make headlines, they're not enough on their own to attract money from abroad. See, a country needs a few crucial ingredients in order to attract a lot of foreign investors. Okay. These are things like political stability, infrastructure, government flexibility and a highly skilled workforce. Mm. Saudi Arabia does have some of these qualities, but there's too much focus on these mega projects and not enough on the other crucial ingredients of success. 
What's amazing is how far the country has come over the past century, which is something I have to give the country credit for. Before the discovery of oil, the country had little industry. It was a tribal society with shepherds and merchants being the main occupations. After the discovery of oil, the country solely focused on its petroleum industry, creating businesses and industries like plastics, petrochemicals and natural gas. This made their economy dependent on one industry, making it a lot more unstable and in the long term unsustainable. Today, petroleum accounts for a staggering 42% of the country's GDP and 90% of what it earns from exports. And this fact is what Saudi Arabia is looking to change with foreign investment before it's too late. In fact, experts from Brookings and the World Bank predict that by 2034, Saudi Arabia will deplete their wealth reserves unless they can pull off meaningful economic and fiscal reform. Despite the promises of shiny mega projects, reality is staring Saudi Arabia death in the face. Economic researchers have recommended that the government focuses on more productive projects that actually guarantee and promote economic growth instead of what they've been doing so far. But there's a main So they need to focus on other things, not just economic growth, like, but the country is a politically stable country, etc. It's not like it's lacks political stability or anything. Major barrier in the way of making these badly needed changes. The Saudi elite's oil-funded extravagant lifestyle. See, thanks to their massive oil revenue, Saudi Arabia gives every citizen a huge discount on petrol, income tax, and limits taxes on products. Yeah, so they have no tax in their country. It's like a limited tax. It's unbelievable. While they've tried to end this unsustainable practice, the Saudi government has been forced to backtrack multiple times to avoid public backlash or even unrest. But but these megacity projects just aren't the solution to the country's economic problems. Take Neom for example. What logical reason is there to build a linear city? Building these enormous walls will require an absurd amount of energy, resources and innovative technology that has yet to be implemented on a massive scale. The city's urban design is unlike any other city and will require untested solutions to function. The most viable infrastructure in development that resembles to what the city is trying to recreate is the Hyperloop train, but it's still nowhere near ready for mass transportation access. And so that's like a train in like Japan that travels like 700 kilometers an hour. This is just one of the many projects Neom and the line are trying to reimagine and develop within the same city. Other projects like water recycling and desalination are also ongoing, which we already know how to do, just not really at that scale. When you consider how much money is required to fund the research for these radical technologies, it makes you wonder if it's really justified. And this doesn't even consider the cost of maintaining the structure's integrity over the coming decades. On top of that, the line's construction alone is estimated to produce at least 1.8 8 billion tons of carbon dioxide or the equivalent of over four years of the UK's emissions. When your project is competing with a major industrialized country for emissions, something is seriously wrong. Especially when you're branding this project as carbon neutral. Well, of course it won't be carbon neutral because look at all this carbon they used. It, it doesn't make sense. And yeah, that is kind of strange. How the hell is this supposed to be carbon neutral? The negative environmental impacts of the project is starting to generate the wrong kind of publicity abroad. The famous postmodernist architect Gian Piero Frasinello has compared the project to seeing the dystopias of your own imagination being created. And this negative attention doesn't help a project hoping to attract foreign investment and improve Saudi Arabia's economic prospects. Adding to the doubts about the project's potential is a tendency in Saudi Arabia and neighboring countries to leave projects unfinished. If we zoom out for a moment to look at all the Gulf states, you can see how many projects have either stalled or been completely abandoned. These projects failed for a host of reasons from Dubai Creek Tower shout out to Dubai lack of communication to constant cost of runs according to global data the Middle East and the Gulf region ranked second to last in the likelihood that infrastructure projects would reach completion the situation is so bad in fact that an estimated 23% of all public private partnership projects are abandoned in the Middle East which is absolutely insane That's considering crazy. the region's track record these mega projects seem more like products of autocratic power structures than a logical attempt at attracting investment. And the thing is, Neom is just the most recent example in Saudi Arabia. Go back a few years and it's not hard to find a failed mega project. After the success of the Burj Khalifa in the neighboring UAE, Saudi Arabia announced it would build even higher. 
The Jeddah Tower was planned to be the first skyscraper to reach 1,000 meters. The kilometer long skyscraper project was abandoned for two reasons. First, the tower pushed the boundaries of modern technology by trying to use concrete as high up as possible without using steel members. Sound familiar? And more importantly, the project's main financial backer, Al Walid bin Talal, was arrested alongside 11 Saudi princes in an anti corruption campaign. Jesus. What's shocking is that the Jeddah Tower project was expected to cost just $1.2 billion, which sounds completely reasonable compared to the lines of $1 trillion price tag, yet they couldn't finish it. But honestly, the failed mega projects isn't even the biggest reason Saudi Arabia has a hard time attracting foreign investors. See, behind the shiny, modern veneer of these super projects, the country is still largely unchanged. It still has a strict Sharia legal system. Now, sure, on the surface, it's going in the right direction. In recent years, the country's leader has touted new freedoms for Saudis, earning the country good press in the West. Just five years ago, women weren't allowed to drive in the kingdom, restaurants had to be gender segregated, and movie theaters and concerts were completely forbidden. Now, all of that has changed, but these changes are mainly cosmetic and do little to change the country's foundations and deeply rooted culture. Hmm. So, they still have cultural problems that doesn't allow Western culture. So, okay. Human rights and labor rights are other areas where the country has a bad track record, and Neom and the line haven't exactly made this any better. This is the village of Al Khayaba, where an activist, Abdul Rahim Al Hwati, vowed to defy the government's eviction order to highlight how the Saudi government forced his tribe to move from their historic homeland. But before he could make this happen, he was killed by Saudi forces. This is just one of many examples that human rights activists, lawyers, and governments are investigating. As recently as May 2023, the UN expressed alarm at the number of imminent executions linked to the Neon project. These human rights violations are horrible on their own, but to make things worse, the project claims to be built for better humans and a better society. Given the reality on the ground, the irony of these statements does little to sway foreign investors that the country has truly changed. When you compare Saudi well, Arabia- Saudi Arabia is definitely a changed country on the forefront, you know? because it has a lot of investment from overseas, like he just said. So. Yeah, to neighbors like the UAE, the difference is completely clear. The UAE is more tolerant of other religions and foreign customs. On top of this, expats and foreign investors can have full ownership of companies in free trade zones, mm. making projects, investments, companies, and the movement of people easier. Ah. These projects actually attract the tourists, talent, investors, and businesses that Saudi Arabia is looking for. Instead of making these major social changes, Changes and modest infrastructure projects, the Saudi Kingdom is committed to impossible goals. It is building these mega city projects with the intention of attracting 100 million annual visitors by 2030. Whoa. To put that goal into perspective, the United States currently has around 80 million visitors yearly. So, Jeez. this is not gonna happen. The Saudi <laughs> tourist sector is still tiny. It might though. I don't know. This guy seems like a pessimist to me. I I'd be more positive about it. If they allow more Western cultures, it for sure can happen. And lacks the infrastructure, jobs, services, transportation, and accommodations to handle such a mass influx of tourists. From any angle, the government strategy to build megastructures to attract massive numbers of tourists overnight seems unwise. Considering these highly complicated structures may never be built in the first place and projects like Neom seem more like another problem than a solution, to put it simply, the project's goals are delusional. And it's sad because the country has so much potential. It already has one of the best universities in the Gulf region, giving the country potential to become a true knowledge-based economy. But for that to happen, the country cannot sit on the fence between its old and new values. Instead of overly ambitious mega projects, the country should focus on smaller more boring projects that actually have the potential to improve things. The point of this video though is not to say whether the line will be built or not or whether Saudi Arabia's social reforms will succeed, it's to show the clear weaknesses in their plan going forward so they can hopefully improve it and make lasting changes that will change the country for the better. But what do you think? Can they accomplish these goals and are these mega projects the right way to do that? Well, that's for you to decide, but that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. That's amazing guys. I think that they will accomplish their goals, but the linear countries that they are planning 
to you know to create it seems a bit kind of outlandish but a lot of the problem a lot of the things that they have built before those giga projects those mega projects have been outlandish and they have pulled some of them off so you know as you said there 23 percent have failed but hopefully they pull this one off 100 million visitors annually would be incredible guys that would be an incredible feat i would definitely go visit for sure if you know i <laughs> if i could so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments down below i reply back to every single comment personally so i'll get back to every single one of you guys I love you all, man. Tell me what you think of this linear dystopian city. It's almost like a Batman comic or like a Marvel comic or something like that that Saudi Arabia is trying to build. I'll see you guys all in the next video, man. Peace.